live here from Las Vegas. Uh, I'll be commenting live with Tullius and Bilzoid today. So Tullius will be live from India and, Tullius and Bilzoid will be live from the UK. One of them will take uh, each of the matches. But let's recap what happened yesterday. So yesterday, that was the uh, HWBOT World Tour 2017 Las Vegas, the first day. And uh, you no, know, everything went uh, so far so good. Everything went well. The uh, overclockers that were attending, uh, the uh, they tried to compete against each other for three hours on three different benchmarks. Super Pies for the 2M, uh, Sunny Bench R15, and 3D Mark 11 Physics. So, of course, out of this qualifier, four of the top overclockers managed to uh, end up in the top. So, we have Lucky Noob from Indonesia. We do have b Boys from Indonesia. We have Stepanzi from the US. And an outsider in this first match this year of the 2017 season, a complete outsider, uh, Doug Nausier from Japan. And we will have a lot of time today to discuss a little bit more on why he is an outsider and how this is actually shaking a little bit the space here for uh, for everything that's going on so um, everyone is ready and uh, pretty much waiting for us for uh, for the match to start you guys uh, will be able to see everything that they have their screen uh, their the systems pretty much anything you want to know you will be able to see it I will be commenting the first match that is showing Stepanzi from the US that finished second in the qualifier against B Boys from uh, Indonesia and of course uh, we uh, will soon be ready to go to uh, to the live draw once we're gonna have our uh, judge that can uh, do the drawing okay guys we're here, to, we're here to draw the benchmark if you want to video it say clearly that you want to video it so PJ is going to do the raffle Uh, the, can, can the judge please repeat the benchmark name? 5.5. Oh no, a few, uh, a few. Oh, just okay guys, uh, draw 3D Mark Physics, limited at 5.5, one flat out, okay. X265 benchmark 1080p, GPU Pi for CPU 500M, so make sure it's 500M. Cinebench R15, Super Pi 6 M, Super Pi, 8 M, flat out, and one at 5.5 G. Okay, cool. Yep. Yes. The first one. 516 M. Good. Super Pi, 6 M. That's full out. Okay. All right, so that's going to be the first benchmark for this game. For this game featuring Stepanzi from the US and b Des from Indonesia, I will have with me today Tulius from India. Hey, man, how are you doing? Very well. Good Perfect. evening and good morning to, <laughs> to everyone who's watching. And uh, we are ready to go. We just have to wait the judge to do the countdown before starting. Hey, guys, we're ready to go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go gents, good luck. Here we go. And here we go, they're going to have 30 minutes in this match, so it's a 1 versus 1 match, so we have Stepans that will be represented by Red and B-Boys represented by the blue team. They will have to make the best score out of Super Pi 16M. Uh, that is a benchmark that is not commonly used in the competition uh, lately, but that's very important to uh, to to have it and uh, to be able to to see what uh, the the overclockers are doing right there. So as you can see, everything is available on the screens. We will be able to see exactly what they are settings, exactly what they are defining as the different uh, system. So Tullius. Here today they are using the Gigabyte motherboard, so the Z270X gaming SoC motherboard, and they all use the latest Kaby Lake CPU, the Core i7 7th Gen uh, CPU, the Core family, and this one is the 7700K. Yep. Uh, this one has a default base frequency of 4.2 gigahertz, what? and they will try yep. to reach as high as they can. SuperPi is not SuperPi is a uh, interesting benchmark so how would you do that uh, if you had this platform in mind 
Um, what the, considering it's pretty much pretty much like uh, Skylake, but just better at clocking. Um, right now, what I what I generally do is a dial in like um, certain settings that I think would work. You know, start off with start start off with like um, basic decent clocks, some somewhere around the five point eight six gigahertz mark. But for that, you're gonna have to pull down really really quickly. So I guess right now, what they'd be doing is just pulling down as as quickly as possible, dialing in settings that they know would probably work, and then they're going to start scale, scaling from there. Uh, do you think? Uh, do you do you know or have an idea of what we can expect in terms of frequencies uh, for today? Um, well, <laughs> considering what we've been seeing on HWBot and you know what's what's kind of been happening with uh, Kaby Lake. I would think well over 6.8, 6.9, 7 gigahertz, maybe even 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 higher. It just depends on the on the CPUs that they have. But yeah, 7G is definitely a possibility. <laughs> I'm I'm not sure how they will be able to uh, to reach out these super high frequencies. Um, for for you guys that that know, like Kaby Lake is the latest Intel CPU that got released actually just a few days ago, and the overclockers here have been at the for at the forefront of testing these CPUs and making sure that they will be able to overclock to the to the maximum of the of the system. And we have seen people going at seven gigahertz with four core and eight thread. So of course the Intel Core i7 7700K is a four-core CPU with hyper trading. So that means you can have eight logical threads um, being calculated at the same time on the CPU. True, and and considering this is super pi, all you need is one all you need is one core. So I mean, I generally, obviously, I mean that's that's something that they're going to do. They could, they're going to disable hyper threading. They're going to disable the other cores and. Um, that should give them some more headroom as well. That's right. I I I like to see that actually Stepans and B Boys are actually doing going head to head um, to to have this uh, to, to have this no this Super Pi 16M. That's not some that's not common. We never used that one in competition before. Ex exactly, exactly. I mean, you generally go either Super Pi 1M or you go 32M. You know, the, the 16M is something new. Um, but then again, generally, what kind of holds true for 32M should hold true for 16M because it's still a pretty decent benchmark considering, I mean, you know, pe people are getting in like the, the the low five minute 40s, five minute 50s and stuff like that. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what um, SuperPi 16M, you know, what they can do there. I'm thinking you know, two and a half minutes under, maybe around there, maybe. Um, we will see. Um, I, honestly, I never, I never really benched Super Pi 16M because too. that's not something you can get. It's really not something that. For it. Very true. Very true. And, and I mean, generally, we'd spend time just, you know, figuring out either 1M or 32M. 32M generally. I mean, that takes the most amount of time. But that's where generally most of your attention would be. Not really 16M. So here we but are. But this is very interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, it's we're already five minutes into that game. None of them had a score yet, um, but they they have to cool down. So let's go back a little bit more on exactly how they should be doing this. So before the game start, they do have to be at positive temperature. So they have to be above zero degree Celsius. Of course, everything is Celsius when you speak here. And right. Right. They, once they get into uh, into the system, uh, was the once the competition start, the matches start, they can do everything they want. They just have to get the best score they can within the the rules and the limitations. True. So this is basically this is of oh, this is full out. So they're they're really going to have to push. I mean, they will be pushing. And um, yeah, two cores, no hyper threading. Um, it'll be it'll be really really interesting to see where they can push the CPUs or how high they can push the CPUs. And so far, we already have a b boy days at five minutes into this game that is already at five gigahertz. But let's face it, these guys are using liquid nitrogen and five gigahertz, you can do that on air cooling. Actually, on, a, uh, yep. AIO, AIO that works. Very true. I mean, those can, be like, and those can be like CPU are super, super good overclockers. That's that's really good. I mean, everyone's everyone here at the show at the at the World Tour 2017 Las Vegas were impressed by the fact that the they can clock 
super easily. You don't have to do pretty much anything. Super Just replace the multiplier. Really, really. I mean, five gigahertz for a for like a not even I wouldn't even say a good CPU. I'd say most decent CPUs will be able to pull five gigahertz for you know air. I mean air or depending on where you are water cooling, but. I mean, in cold countries, I'm sure people can run five gigahertz on air cooling. Absolutely no problem. If if it's like you're in Finland or if you're in Russia or something like that, I don't think you'd have an issue. So let's try to see the first run of Bboch test. He's doing all of them to see. He's at 5.5 gigahertz right now. Already. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see uh, the settings and the benchmark run. Yeah. So he's going to be setting up priority and affinity and all of that, just getting his windows set up the way he likes. So what would you do in a, in this position, Tolius? Um, pretty much, pretty much this, pretty much this. Now, I don't know if if um, I don't know what I don't know what other tweaks are are really allowed. But if it'd be really interesting to see if, well. I don't think copy was that would work considering you can't really partition a drive or you can't add anything. Especially so. not in the 30 minute matches. I mean, you yeah, don't really, have the really. time I to mean, do you it. Just meant, you just, you really, absolutely true. But it'd be really interesting to actually see if if Waza even affects 16M. But yeah, this is pretty much all 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 I'd do is first I'd get a run in. Most importantly, just get one run in. Get it run. You know, just let it run. Let it run, let it run. <laughs> yep. So uh, people will, will, will sometimes ask, like, why is that there is only this window on the screen? It's just because they killed everything in the background. So any process or anything that run in the system that will is. impact even very marginally the performances and the final score. So these guys, like the extreme overclockers, are trying to find out all the things that will use even some very tiny, tiny, tiny cycles of CPU calculations, and they will try to kick them out just to get the last milliseconds if uh, if they can uh, if they can have it. True. True. So this is this. I mean, SuperPy is literally all about the millisecond. Um, anything and everything you can do to eke out the tiniest of tiniest margins is definitely worth trying. And um, yeah, I mean. People have generally pretty much the same idea where you want to set up your your affinity and then you want to set up your your priority and all of that. Um, I I I don't see what else they can do at this point apart from you know memory. Memory has a very big part to play here. So I guess yeah, the one with <laughs> they, the fastest memory. The Basically, if yeah, that, that would be interesting to see which one can get the memory working. And talking about memory working, Stepanzi from the qualifier yesterday was not even touching his memory. He was, he was like, oh yeah, I don't understand why this one is like not working this way and so on. So he was like, yeah, <laughs> uh, dude, if you don't even know, if you can't activate XMP, it's like, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess this is just brand new. It's a brand new platform, so definitely gonna have some some kind of you know, let's just say, teething issues. I mean, this is the bleeding edge. You will bleed. <laughs> so, <laughs> almost the end of the first run of Bboch Des for Super Prize 16M in this semi-final of the OC World Championship, Las Vegas 2017, and that's the first score: two, two minutes minute 43 40, seconds. Two minutes 43, three, seven, six. Yeah. So we Thank were close. You. We were close two and a half minutes. I mean, well, pretty close. Less than 20 and minutes to go, champs. And he's doing the screenshot for validation purposes by the ju He's not doing the screenshot. Is they are not doing the screenshot because it's live. But if they were doing a score on HW bot, they would have to actually do do it this way. Exactly. These are the rules. So I mean, every single competition, it's pretty much it's pretty much the way you do it on HW bot. You you have all your windows, your your CPU, your memory tab, all of that open, and of course, make sure you get that screenshot. <laughs> Most importantly. <laughs> B 
<clears throat> oh, that's a nice black screen. And we have a black mm -hmm. screen. Black screen. Let's have a look at Stepans. He's at 2 minutes 6 seconds and 560 milliseconds at loop 20. There's loop 20. three more loops. Stepans representing the USA at home. And will that be the first score from Stepans? It does look like it. Almost there. That does look quicker. Oh my yes, god, it that's, that's is. a, oh, that's a good, like, 14 quicker. seconds two better. Minutes, 29, four, yes. five, three. Two minutes, 29, 4, 5, 3. Wow, so we had Bibojis taking the first score in that game um, just before the 20 minute mark. And then Stepans is now catching up on this. And uh, he will... Uh, he's, I think he feels quite relaxed now that he, he knows he, can, he did a, a great score and he can... Uh, no. Uh, have it on the scoreboard. This is very important in this in that kind of competitions, uh, placing your placeholder score. So that's basically a, sc a score, whatever it is. Uh, usually it takes less than 10 minutes for them to put a score on the scoreboard. But today it seems that the overclockers went to to really push very hard, very fast. That can lead in some... True. I think that can lead in some uh, You issue. can have all kinds of problems, yes. Mm. you Because... When you when you actually pull down so quickly, you can have all, all kinds of moisture issues. You you you, you can have board issues. Uh, yeah, you you can have a multitude of problems here. But um, if I if I caught that correctly, Stepons has already run six gigahertz. Um, it yeah, I like think it. he has. Uh, keep in mind, guys, we are here at the OC World Championship. This is the Las Vegas 2017 qualifier. The person that will win today will get a ticket to go to the OC World Championship World Final. Uh, this is not announced yet, but that's going to be happening this year. Uh, last year was um, finishing on a very high note. Mark0053 from Canada won the HWBOT uh, World Series, uh, the old name of the competitions, last year in Berlin. That was less than a month ago. And it, was, it will be representing Canada in 2017 to defend his title. Yeah. So Bibosh Des here, um, almost ready to start the calculation he's just about getting set finding the process defining the priority to real time so that that real time priority will mean that it will um be priority above anything else like anything even, else so even the refreshing of some uh, of some drivers and things like this so out of all Very the application true. of the system it will be the first one it's Windows will give it bit... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> yeah, Windows. Windows will try and give it, you know, absolute, absolute priority. Sometimes it can do. Sometimes it can do some funny things, though. I mean, for me, sometimes when you're absolutely on the edge, real time is real time can just push you over the edge and cause you to crash. And sometimes you can get that run just by setting it to high or just keeping it as normal. At least you can get the run at the frequency versus, you know, hitting real time. But that's when you're at the absolute, absolute edge. Some benchmark behave so we're almost halfway. Yeah, almost halfway. And some benchmark uh, behave differently as well. I mean, some Very some of the benchmark will just not render anything. They will just not display anything. Like yeah, Cinebench, Cinebench, for example. Yeah. You think your system's locked down. Nothing moves, not even the mouse. And then it'll finally give out, you know, it'll, it'll finally spit that image out. But nothing works. <laughs> so we are uh, less than 15 minutes into that game. So that means we have 50% of that game. Diagnostic mode. We had more than 50% into this game. Uh, this is quite interesting to see that the two overclockers only managed to do one score. But this is important to note that this benchmark lasts for 2 minutes and 30 seconds in average. Okay. At this frequency, average, like, yeah. like the guys are doing today. So, I mean, in the best case, you will be able to run it like 
10, maybe if you're very good, 11 times maximum? Yeah, that's 10. Even 10 would be pushing it, considering two and a half minutes. So that's that's almost 20, 25 minutes right there. You'd be lucky to get, I think, six, seven good runs in. You know, considering the time it takes to pull down and if you have any issues and stuff like that, you'd be, yeah, nine, eight or nine runs would be would be just awesome. 13 minutes to go. And then we are uh, focusing on the screen. On the on the actually, Stepanzi is having some uh, troubles. He's restarting the system for now. Mm -hmm. But B boys is soon to be having a second score yeah. for this match. But it's already like uh, see, it's already slower. Yeah, it's already slower yes. than what Stepanzi did. Seven. What is important is never try to always beat it, the other guy. The final just goal is improve, to beat the other yeah. guy, but just improve step by step your system. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because this is, considering you have only 30 minutes, you've got to get to know the hardware, you've got to get to know what the system can do, and you've got to push. So it's quite the challenge. It's quite, quite the challenge. But I mean, Boy Boyjis is running at what, 58? I can't, yeah, he's, at, he's only at 5.8G. So it's not, it's not looking too bad because if he can run six gigahertz and match step ons, this is and it's not looking so bad. Yeah. He's going for it. He's now at six gigahertz. Uh, he's at six gigahertz at one point seventy eight volts for the V core. His memory is at thirty two hundred. Testing that should be able to go further with the uh, with the bench. Here we go. Kill Explorer. Killing everything and running. And, and crossing everything. <laughs> <laughs> Finger. Stepanzi is still having trouble to boot inside the system, so it seems it's not stable enough to restart his benching session. But let's focus on B Boy's test. So, um, the way it works for SuperPy to use, how would you explain that to someone that just tuned into the live? So, basically, basically what SuperPy does is it's calculating pi to the million. So, when you say 16 million, so it's going to calculate the decimal value of pi to the 16 millionth number. Now, um, it's it's a really, really good test of um, CPU clock speed and your memory clock, especially SuperPi 16M and 32M, because uh, they can get really, really punishing on your memory as well as, um, you know, your clock. So this is actually it's one of the most tweakable benchmarks out there it's one of the oldest benchmarks out there and it's also i think one of the most favorite community favorite um, benchmarks there is it's it's certainly a lot of fun and you can spend endless endless hours tweaking um it's it definitely no something no that boot. it's definitely something that you know every single overclocker should 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 get into and there's so many guides out there. There's lovely guides all all over the place. So many I, forums and on each subject. Yeah, as you said, that's one of the oldest benchmarks that it do that do exist here. And I mean, people love it, people hate it, but people use it. So <laughs> that's why it's yep. uh, still being very much used. <laughs> but this kind of benchmark is like single threaded, uh, very high, depend highly dependent on the memory and memory. Uh, yeah, memory mostly. Even and, yeah. To a certain extent, even even your cache, but it's mainly memory and clock speed. Cache definitely helps your uncore. That definitely helps. But um, yeah, it's basically a CPU and memory benchmark. And there, loop twenty just finished. Let's uh -oh. go for the next two loop. Loop twenty one. Hmm. Looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Actually, <laughs> um, well, not. Dak. Drum roll, last loop. It's already too slow to beat Stepanzi, but yeah. he's improving his score, so that's good. For just two minutes, 30. Oh, he's doing a worse score. Yeah. 
So, so, so how can that happen, Tudius? When when you do a benchmark, you're supposed to clock higher, and then you're slower. Um, it could be it it could be something as simple as uh, it could be something as simple as just the system maybe needs a restart. It could be just something that you're not really stable. You're uh, you're just borderline. Um, I really uh, apart. I really don't know why this happened because it actually did did manage to finish that benchmark and SuperPi being SuperPi, it would have it would have complained. It would have complained quite a bit earlier. But yeah, maybe the RAM's uh, maybe the RAM's not really stable. But then again, it ran earlier. So this is this is strange. Sometimes when stuff like this happens, I just I just restart the system. I mean, I and especially if I'm in a competition, I'd probably try. Yeah. I'd probably try a BCLK, maybe yeah, and then if that doesn't work, just quickly restart the system and quickly try again. Mm-hmm. Well, there's always uh, there's always way for you to to find out what it's what it was. And you say the benchmark did not complain. Uh, what were you uh, trying to say when you say that? Because as an overclocker, uh, benchmark do complain, but we can I love it in a way. Yeah, <laughs> not exact round. Everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite. Who's benching this benchmark? Yeah, no. But generally, I mean, if you're if you're remotely unstable, SuperPi is gonna spit out an error saying, you know, "Sorry." But surprisingly, it ran. So here we go again. And One he actually more. went 200 megahertz higher. So he went from 5.8 G to 6 gigahertz, and it still went slow. That's a little strange. That was the strange bit, but <laughs> that is strange. Sometimes it's just a system restart. There's six minutes and 20 seconds left in this game. Has Stepan's rig got going yet? Stepan is still. <laughs> he, he, he just managed to to came back in the system. You want to focus a little bit on uh, more on him? Let's see that. Already defining real time priority. Hmm? So we talk about the priority of the process. So is setting processor affinity. So how would you describe that? So processor affinity is basically now what you're doing is you're telling Windows to direct all of all of the traffic from this application, simply put, to that specific core and not to try and distribute it over multiple cores because that generally slows you down. So when you set affinity and you give it a particular core, so that application will run mainly on that core, giving you, you know, a little bit of a, a, a boost, I'd say. Um, it just prevents Windows or your task scheduler from switching multiple cores, trying to you know do its thing. So this gives you this gives you a boost, definitely does. That that's also avoid having some special uh, solution within the operating system to switch in between the uh, the different thread and cores. So you just basically like lock to one specific side. Right, you're basically just locking it to that core and saying you run on this particular core instead of you know Windows trying to run that same over multiple cores and do whatever it thinks is right. So that generally will make you go slower because the task scheduler again is trying to split the instructions and you don't want that. You just want it to be streamlined and go to one core and get it done because SuperPy again it is a single thread application. So why? Yeah, there's there's no point in actually switching, uh, having the switching context uh, be using it. True, a lot of true. Uh, off cycles for it. But once yes. again, th- this is a benchmark, so this might not be relevant to um to all the th- the the, need, the stuff we need, like for example for games and so on. But it's a very very interesting piece of software for you to test what you have as performances in single threaded performances. Less than uh, four minutes, guys. Let's face it. Intel is the king on the uh, on on this game. Uh, SuperPi, yep. I mean the uh, Intel yep. root for it, every score and top been score for de- for a decade. decade. And they're yeah, showing it's been, it again now. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, Skylake was sick fast in SuperPi, and 
by the looks of it, Cavalry is just going faster. So, yeah, that domination isn't going anywhere. These guys, they uh, Intel just rules when it comes to Super Pi. Just absolutely dominates. Let's uh, have a look at B-Boy. Is uh, it's funny? It says like temperature says zero degree. Actually, nope. <laughs> nope. And and he's he's at five point five gigahertz again. So so starting st starting from lower down, I think. Uh, yeah. Oh no. Five point. There no, we no, go. Was just, uh, using five point yeah. five as a safe setup. Uh, as a safe setup. At, yep. uh, is now at five point nine for the CPU frequency, but is at five point seven for the uncore frequency. So how can the yes. uncore frequency impact your score in SuperPi? Um, so, so basically, it's 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 your it's your cache. Now, uh, your cache also runs at a certain multiplier. So, the faster you can run your cache, the faster you can feed information to your CPU cores, and therefore go faster. It's um, they both they both work hand in hand, can kind, kind of a thing. So, you want one you you want your cache to be fast enough to feed the CPU so that it's not waiting for information. So. Um, Overclocking your cache definitely helps, you know, get the best out of your clocks. Um, they generally, Ill, uh, your cache won't clock as far as your CPU will, but um, it's critical to get it dialed in to the maximum you can push it to, because you want to make sure that you're feeding your instruct your your instructions to the cores fast enough. And we have one minute forty-seven seconds left. Uh, Stepanzi is, is trying to uh, to make is... the system boot again. You can see uh, the wow. LED code just below the graphic card. This is very stressful because you have to go in the OS, so you have to boot. So you have to make it. You have to make it boot. See, he's looking at the scoreboard. It's like, damn it, damn it, come on, push it. Damn it, damn it. Boot, boot. <laughs> So far, yeah, he's still in the lead. So now. far, in the lead. So that's good. But Bibojdes is actually benching right next to him. True, <laughs> and he's at 5.9. And if he's restarted the system or figured out what caused him to go slower, this is going to get close. This is going to get close in a hurry. So we can see Stepan's quite quite stressed, <laughs> quite stressed out. When I go, when I go. See, the, the rule is they have to launch the benchmark, benchmark before the end of the time. So any benchmark that is started just before the end of the countdown will be valid. I mean, if they valid. finish. <laughs> True. Just like basketball. If the ball's in the air, it's valid. <laughs> right. So 32 seconds. Uh, I guess you're going to have to make a few tests to make sure it's uh, stable enough. And there then... And he's just hit it straight. Here we go. And right now we have 15 seconds left in this first semi-final. The two overclockers are benching. Yeah. So we have B-Boy's that right. might be able to catch up on Stepons. That's going to be the very last minute. Ooh. And, well, and complete, he, guys. He's, Ooh. he's on the road. He's on the road to beat him. Ooh. He's on the road to beat him. Yes, yes, yes. One more loop. One more loop. Oh, oh. oh no. Oh. No. Just... Oh, does it be like 38 seconds? Yeah. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, that's Seven, close. Five. Oh, Man. that's too bad. He's improving his score, but one. not enough to go beat Stepans. So Stepans doesn't, doesn't even have to finish the, uh, the benchmark. I guess he will be doing it because he wants to, uh, to, to still have that, uh, that score. Oh my God, that was close. That uh, was that could that have been close. great. Yeah, that was close. Yeah, congratulations, guys. That was a nice, uh, a nice step. We're just gonna have to wait. Uh, the judge, if the judge wants to have a word, uh, just before the end. Guys. Very much. We have a winner, the USA, Mr. Joe Stepanzi. <laughs> America. <laughs> Representing America, so Stepanzi well will access the final of today. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. That was. Uh, Congratulations. So busy. Seven that was already. <laughs> that was a very it's close down, actually. Small. If you if you think about it, because 
because Borges was consistently benching and Stepons, he had he dished out a very nice run early on, but then he had problems consistently. And he got going towards the end of the round. But yeah, that that was looking close, especially Borges on the last round. Who knows, you know, if his system hadn't given him that 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 weird issue where it went slower instead of faster. Who knows? <laughs> That's the thing, you know, to lose, um, this is the kind of competition, anything can, I can happen. Uh, Stepan Zip was pretty pretty hard at getting the first core in, and uh, Viborgis was trying step by step to go, uh, go catch him. <laughs> For you guys on the live chat here on hey Twitch, uh, uh, you're watching us, uh, welcome. Uh, this is the Overclocking World Championship Las Vegas 2017, and we will be doing the casting all along today for all the matches and the first match just finished of course we're gonna have some analysis with another guest that's gonna be Bill Zoid from UK right after the break uh, let us know on the live chat if you have any question because in between the matches we have the time to answer some of your questions if you have any question about the new Kabilex CPUs the 7th gen core i7 7700k and all the uh, 7th gen CPU from Intel if you have any question let us on the live chat uh, if you have any question about the motherboard or the system they're using today they are all using the z270x gaming soc motherboard from gigabyte and they are also using of course the uh, intel uh, core i7 7700k uh, with that it's powered by a psu a snow silent psu from seasonic these one are 850 watt if i'm uh, if i'm correct and uh, they have uh, that some nice looking uh, casing around so it's all white uh, they're using some um, and they're using some uh, uh, regular graphic cards and uh, and memory as well from uh, from different partners guys we're gonna take a short break and come back with the analysis with buildzoid <laughs> 